<laughs> Hello and welcome one more time to my YouTube channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe, press the buttons down there. Say hello in the comments as well, yes. So 60s reissue Stratocasters, that's what we're talking about today. More specifically, a affordable ones. Let's go back in time, shall we? The most highly regarded Fender Stratocasters, the most desirable ones, are typically uh, the early 60s ones. So those are strats produced between 1960 and 1965 before the CBS Corporation uh, bought the company from Leo. Uh, During that period, the, uh, the way that Fender were making Fender Stratocasters uh, was quite specific in terms of how the guitar was made. Before we start talking about what that means, why don't we have a little look at today's contenders? So first up we have this. Boom! Yes! This is a Mexico, made in the Mexico factory, uh, what's called a classic series 60s Fender Stratocaster. And this is a marvellous thing, isn't it? Look at it, look how beautiful it is, yes. Uh, its rival in this little competition today is this. Boom! This here is a Japanese, what's called an ST62 uh, 60s reissue Stratocaster. Now, when we're talking about Fender Stratocasters from the 60s, there's a few particular features about these guitars that define them as a 60s reissue or an early 60s reissue for that matter. The first off is the headstock shape. You'll note that in uh, the CBS era, 65 onwards, uh, the headstock grew in size as the CBS Corporation attempted to make the logo more noticeable. So, but there's just something to be said for that classic smaller headstock. Just looks right, doesn't it? Looks perfect. So, the next most significant thing about a 60s Strat is that you'll note up here there's no truss rod uh, access. The truss rod, if you need to adjust the uh, the relief of the neck, is accessible via the butt of the neck. Just in there, tucked away where you can't get to it, making it really awkward to work with, is the uh, little crosshead screw that's attached to the bottom end of the truss rod to, uh, to allow you to adjust the relief on the neck. They also have no skunk stripe you see another feature typical to the 60s stratocaster is the six point floating trim yes yeah, so called because of the six screws you see here yes other features that make a early 60s stratocaster stand out uh, is the radius can you see uh, the radius of the fretboard there boy it's looking down there um these had a 7.25 inch radius fretboard, which meant there was quite a lot of curvature uh, on the neck, which was nice for playing chords up here, but it was a little tricky for your widdlies up here as things would uh, choke out. Which means these guitars typically have to have a higher action to get around the choking issue. Uh, the other thing is that the frets are what you call a vintage narrow, so they're much thinner than what you might find on later newer guitars with like medium jumbo frets and things like that. So it makes it a little bit more fragile, a little more delicate to play. And also a little bit more susceptible to buzz and things like that if you try and get the action nice and low. But it is what it is. Other features on the 60s ones, from the 50s into the 60s they moved to a three ply pit guard. They went from using eight screws around the pit guard to 11 screws, yeah. And other, oh, and a five way switch as well, yeah. Five way instead of three way so you could blend those, uh, those pickups. Over the years, Fender have reissued that style strap with all those features a whole bunch of different times. Yes, you can get a custom shop uh, version of a 60s strap that's extravagant and fancy and really, really expensive but beautifully made and all that stuff. Then there's like the American vintage reissues, the Avery's. Again, wonderful uh, reissues. But you really can't go wrong with some of the uh, the 60s reissues that were done at the more offend affordable end of things. Uh, Namely, the Japanese made ST62 range and the Mexican made classic series. So here's the great thing about these guitars. Because they're so affordable, they make brilliant guitars for upgrading. Basically, the best thing you can do with these is upgrade the pickups. Now, I've done that with this one, but not with this one. This one comes with the stock vintage style single coils that you get from the factory. This one, however, I fit with a set of Fender 5762 reissue pickups. Uh, a wonderful set of pickups. So why don't we play these a little bit, just get a little bit of, 
the listen to how they sound uh, and then I'll talk about some of the differences between the Mexican and the Japanese one that you can expect to find if you want to buy one. Yes. All right, here we go. is Japan. Which one won it for you? Um, my personal favourite is the Japanese Stratcaster. There's just something a little cooler about a Japanese Strat, especially those uh, 
80s, early 90s ones, uh, the build quality on them just has a little something over the, the later Mexico ones. That being said, the Mexico ones for the price you pay are a fantastic guitar, perfectly playable in any circumstances. If you want a 60s Strat reissue type experience, you really cannot go wrong for that price and infinitely upgradable as well. If you want to replace any parts with upgraded parts on it, it's a perfect platform for doing that because you haven't put much into it to begin with. That Japanese one that you saw me playing just now had a set of 5762 Fender pickups in it. Which now you tell me what you thought. Were they better than the stock Mexican pickups? Just as good, different, better? What were they? You let me know. If you want to find a used, affordable 60s reissue Strat, these are the ones to look for. You can't go wrong with either one, in my, in, in, really, in my opinion. They're both fantastic. The Japanese ones do tend to have just a very slightly higher build quality to them, maybe perhaps better selected woods, maybe just an ever slightly better finish, say like on the fret ends, on the fret work. So yeah, if you want an affordable 60s reissue strap, there you go. All right, thanks for watching. Come again, don't forget to like and subscribe. Go and check out my band, uh, the Dog Shark Blues, uh, over on our YouTube channel or on our website, dogshark.co.uk. And uh, yeah, say hi. All right, thanks very much, bye. <laughs>